So as Pra Pra in Pramu announced, we want to speak something about uh, the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, Goranga Mahaprabhu. Um, but before we do that, shall we sing a little? <laughs> Jai Radha Madhava. <laughs> Jaya Kunjabi Hari 
topic today is Goranga Mahaprabhu, Goranga Avatar, also known as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As we prepare for the Appearance Day festival coming Tuesday, are you coming also on Tuesday? Who's coming? Tuesday evening, okay. Um, in India, many people celebrate Holi on on this same day. And I was just in Vrindavan, Braj, Govardhan, and there they they celebrate Holi uh, for an entire month, or even more. Yeah, they said some said forty days basically. Um, that's nice, and it's uh, it gets quite wild. Begins on this day or finishes on It neither begins nor ends, <laughs> but it's kind of the high point. It's it's the main sort of main day. Anyway, for the. F uh, for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the big festival is Gora Purnima. It is uh, a Purnima, uh, full moon day. And uh, we like to celebrate uh, the appearance of Gora, of Goranga, uh, also known as Vishwambara, also known in his later life as Sri Krishna Chaitanya and by his followers as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I had idea to make this a visual meditation and uh, initially I had mm, I had big plans. We were going to sort of go through the entire lifetime of Mahaprabhu, but then I realized that may not be practical. Um, maybe we will continue <laughs> on Tuesday what we start today. Let's see what happens. But uh, I, I thought let's see if we can touch on a few, a few high points of his uh, appearance and his life prior before he took sannyas, the sannyas order. Um, some of you are aware of the uh, book which for Gaudiya Vaishnavas is extremely important book called Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, a work by uh, the great Acharya Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami whose place where he wrote this book I was fortunate to visit um, in Radha Kund. He was living in a very small room in Radha Kund <coughs> composing the Chaitani Charitamrita. So this this work is mm, kind of summarizing his early life, Lord Chaitanya's early life, but then expands out on his later life. But I'm going to focus because Tuesday is its appearance, so I thought let's talk about his early life and 
let's see how the time goes, but I want to also share with you uh, some images which I would like to keep as a bit of a surprise, and I think you will find uh, inspiring. How does that sound? Two thumbs. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> it all begins with Sri Advaita Acharya. And Lochandas Thakur has sung, I won't go through the whole song, but he says, Jaya Jaya Advaita Acharya Doya Moin, Jara Hu Hunkara Gora Avatara Hoi. All glories to Sri Advaita, most compassionate, whose roaring caused Gora to incarnate. And this is referring to what is described by Vrindavan Das Thakur in another, in his earlier work, that uh, Advaita Acharya was a very senior and highly respected uh, uh, sadhu Vaishnava uh, in the Navadvip, in the greater Navadvip area. And uh, he was feeling, despite his high position, a sense of um, inability to, to uplift uh, the population, which had become quite degraded, uh, quite degraded with in their habits, degraded in their uh, forms of worship, and so, in in a state of desperation, practically, he worshipped the Lord and prayed that the Lord Himself would come, and it said. Hu hunkar, hunkar. You have this word in Hindi. Hunkar means a loud shouting, right? Yeah. So hunkar, yeah. hunkar. So with loud shouting, he would call to the Lord, and it said that he worshipped the Lord in the form of Narayan, in the form of Shalagram Shila. And, of course, the Lord responded. He heard his call. He heard his call and it coincided with his own desire because, of course, the Supreme Lord only acts according to his uh, sweet will and it was his very sweet will to appear in, even to, in this age, even in this a very disturbed age of Kali. Uh, he had his own purposes. Uh, he had um, what are called external purposes and internal purposes. And uh, the elaboration on that um, is very great in Chaitanya Charitamrita. I won't go into that here. It's interesting, though, that Krishnadas, the author of this work, uh, gives a lot of attention in the first uh, eight chapters, nine chapters, we can say nine chapters, to make sure that we, who are reading his work, understand just who is Lord Chaitanya and why he has come. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, very detailed explanation of who he is to understand what is called tattva, uh, what is the truth of the Lord, who is, when we speak of the Lord, what do we mean and why do we understand that Chaitanya is none other than uh, Krishna himself. Um, anyway, responding to his call, to Advaita Acharya's call, he appears, and he appears in uh, perfect timing. 
on the day of the Purnima, which is no regular Purnima because it so happens, or we may want to say by his arrangement it happens, there is a, an, e an eclipse an eclipse of the moon happening at that time. Hmm. Are we okay now with the sound? Well, I think it's a little bit too... A little bit ringing too much. I thought it was fine before. Hare <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> It can go more if it. It's good. It's good. Happy, happy. <laughs> um, he arranged that there would be a, a an eclipse because in Bengal it was a practice. It seems, especially along people living along the River Ganga, that if there was eclipse, in order to sort of counteract possible negative influence of an eclipse of Rahu coming before Chandra's, uh, Chandra. They would, uh, people would go and stand in the Ganga uh, for, for the purity of, of the Ganga, but on top of that they would also chant uh, mantra, and in particular so we are told they would chant a certain mantra. What was that mantra? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the Lord advented simultaneously with uh, that mantra, which was his principal. Uh, message, his his whole message for the world uh, was that uh, what we can do to counteract all of the troubles of this world and simultaneously raise our uh, our consciousness to pure God consciousness is to chant the names of the Lord Hare Nama. Hare Nama, Hare Nama Eva Kevala, Kalo Na Asti Eva, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Gatiranyata. So it was perfect timing. This image uh, is showing Sita Devi, the Sita Takurani. She was known as Sita Takurani. This is one verse translated from Chaitanya. Charitamrita Adi Lila, verse uh, chapter 13. Riding in a palanquin covered with cloth and accompanied by maidservants, Sita Takurani came to the house of Jagannath Mishra. Jagannath Mishra is, uh, is Goranga's father. Bringing with her many auspicious articles such as fresh grass, paddy, gorochan, turmeric, kumkuma, and sandal. All these presentations filled a large basket. Now this is part of a longer description uh, which is calling attention to the sense that there's a lot of awareness that something special is happening, something very special is happening. Um, the demigods seem to be coming in disguise <laughs> and they're bringing so many gifts uh, for the Lord as a baby. And this is happening after uh, Sachi Mata, the mother of Mahaprabhu, has undergone terrible time uh, of having eight, not one, two, three, four, eight miscarriages, one after another. And finally, finally, after eight miscarriages, she gives birth uh, first to, to the older brother of uh, Vishwambar, it's Mahaprabhu. Uh, she gives birth to Vishwarupa. Vishwarupa, 
Later, he is going to leave home and he's going to break his mother's heart because he will leave home permanently and never come back and never be heard from again. Um, it's going to be another heartbreak, as we can imagine, when Vishambar, at the young age of 24, also leaves home. But that time, when he, le when he leaves home, Advaita Charya, who had called him, makes a kind of trick, a kind of arrangement, after he takes sannyas to again meet his mother, and his mother uh, begs him, <coughs> Don't disappear like your brother. Stay in Jagannath Puri because then we will hear news about you because of the, the regular communication going back and forth. But that's getting much ahead of this story. So many stories are there of uh, little Vishwambar's adventures as a child. Uh, he becomes known as uh, Nimai because he has been born under a Neem tree. So, for example, he is seen one time playing <laughs> with a cobra. Uh, cobras are quite common in Bengal. Uh, they are deadly dangerous snakes. But not for Mahaprabhu, not for little Nimai. For Nimai, uh, this cobra apparently was no ordinary cobra. This was Anantashesha. And it's Anantashesha on whom the Lord Vishnu reclines very comfortably in the causal ocean or in the Garbhodaka Shayi ocean. So he's kind of demonstrating that pastime as a child, as a, as a baby. And we see how the, the parents, the mother, everyone is seeing this and they are horrified, as we certainly would also be if we saw a small child playing with a snake, <laughs> a poisonous snake, right? Um, but he's having, a, he's having a good time. <laughs> Uh, so like this, there's uh, many leelas described. Uh, one of the, also as a child, fun sort of leelas. Leela, as most of you know, means pastime. Uh, we are all in this world, um, in the state of karma bandhana, we are bound by our karma, but the Lord is completely free from karma. He never um, is implicated by his actions, quite the opposite. His actions are lila, and uh, his actions are completely free, completely uh, joyful, and uh, all of the, all persons who participate in his lila are also uh, f freed from karmic bondage. So these two uh, these two bandit robbers who had come in order to steal the ornaments, the valuable ornaments. You remember Sita Takurani had brought so many nice gifts. Uh, not mentioned in the verse that we read, she also brought valuable ornaments. So, in a small village culture, you know, the word gets around, oh, this child is wearing all these gold ornaments, and so that attracts thieves. So two thieves came and sort of in, um, uh, allured uh, little Nimai to come and play with them and then they picked him up and took him away thinking now we can take him to a lonely place and we can take off all of his ornaments we won't harm the child but we you know 
we want is horn. But um, they had their plan, but little Nimai had his plan. And his little Nimai's plan turned out to prevail. And his plan was, let's go for a little joyride around Navadip and we can see the sights and uh, we can have some fun uh, just riding on the shoulders of these two uh, gentlemen or not so gentlemen <laughs> and and let us uh, let them take me around and they will not know it but I'm going to take them in a circle so that where they think they're running away and they're actually just coming around in it <laughs> to the place where they started. They're going to bring me back home. And so that's what he does and that's what they do. Uh, and when they realize what's happened, they brought him back home, <laughs> they run away without having taken his jewelry. And uh, little Nimai just continues play and having, having fun. So as a child, uh, he is also demonstrating his, um, because uh, uh, the Lord has relations with all of his devotees and each of these relations have different flavors. And in particular, there is the flavor of the parent-child relationship, a relationship which is generally very sweet um, and sometimes maybe bittersweet and sometimes with some anxiety on the part of the parents. But all of this, with, when it's in relation to the Lord, is intensifying. It's every, every day is increasing intensity of love in uh, what is called the Vatsalya Rasa. But now jumping forward uh, to Nimai becoming Nimai Pandit. As a teenager already, Nimai becomes known as Nimai Pandit uh, because he becomes so learned, particularly in Sanskrit grammar. Uh, Sanskrit grammar study is it's a world in itself. There are, there are people who spend their lives uh, just studying Sanskrit grammar. Uh, there are uh, the foundational texts, uh, Pan, Panini's Ashtadhyayi, um, but then there's the commentaries on the Ashtadhyayi, and then there's the commentary on the commentaries, and on and on. And um, there, there's a whole culture of debate about Sanskrit grammar and sort of cutting and, and, and splitting uh, the fine points of the rules of grammar. It becomes like high technology in language. And Nimai Pandit was quite expert at this. And it came one occasion when he got opportunity to demonstrate his, uh, his expertise in grammar. And that's when a particular uh, other pundit, scholar, came to town, who was known as Keshava Kashmiri, Keshava from Kashmir. And although it's not mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita, I did a little research and I came to know that Keshava Kashmiri uh, was from the Nimbarka Sampradaya. So he's a Vaishnava and he was a very prominent Vaishnava. But uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj tells them that he was, he was a little proud of his learning and he came to demonstrate his learning and it seems that one of the aspects of this learning culture at that time in India, especially in Navadvip, Navadvip they say was the 
<laughs> the Oxford of India at the time. It was a center of learning. Um, there was, there were, as I mentioned before, there were debates and it seems that uh, there was something to be gained uh, along with reputation uh, by winning these debates. Uh, one could win uh, support, one could win followers, uh, perhaps one could win wealth. So this Keshava Kashmiri came and the, uh, all the pundits of Navadvip <coughs> said, well, let's send Nimai Pandit to debate with him. <laughs> let's send him first so that, you know, it, so that we won't be embarrassed by losing to him. Uh, he can lose to Nimai, or Nimai Pandit can lose to him. And so uh, this meeting came about and a discussion uh, began in which Nimai Pandit suggested to Keshava Kashmiri, perhaps you can show us your learning by um, reciting some poetry that you have com composed. And we're told that he composed on the spot extempore, he composed not one or two or three verses, but one hundred verses praising uh, Ganga, Ganga Devi, Ganga Mai. And he recited them, it said, like the wind, Sanskrit, perfect Sanskrit, immaculate grammar, everything. It was all very wonderful, very impressive, but then what did Nimai Pandit say? He said, nice, but in verse five, <laughs> he's recited a hundred verses and now he's going back to verse five to tell him there are three, not one, not two, but three faults <laughs> of uh, not grammar, but of poetics in your, in your verse, uh, which he then points out and Keshava Kashmiri is completely uh, distraught and destroyed and embarrassed and he doesn't know what to say and he's... But uh, Nimai Pandit is, he's completely, he's very humble and polite and he says, I, you know, I don't mean to embarrass you but there are these faults, I mean, let's face it. Uh, all of this left Keshava Kashmiri to uh, just, we would say in English, uh, t to leave with his tail between his legs. You know that expression? Like a dog after a fight. He, he went with his tail between his legs. Uh, he went home and this is the image we see is that he is He's sleeping at night and he has a, uh, a dream and in his dream uh, Saraswati Devi comes t to him, appears to him and says basically don't be surprised that you lost this debate. You were debating none other than the Supreme Lord himself. What do you expect? And so then the next day he goes, he meets Nimai Pandit, he uh, offers his respects and apologies and in this way Nimai Pandit demonstrates his uh, very in, uh, unlimited knowledge, his unlimited learning. But actually this learning of Nimai Pandit was a cause of concern to some of the senior Vaishnavas. So Shiva's Pandit in particular, who was also a pundit, um, expressed concern that Nimai Pandit had become mm, his, he had become himself proud of his learning and, and was neglecting the higher purpose of life, of uh, devotion to the Lord. Uh, he was in some anxiety about that and he expressed it to uh, Nimai Pandit and, and said, in effect, he said, we're praying for you, that you will c 
come to a, a proper understanding of the, the, perp the real purpose of life. The real purpose of life is not just to show off your cleverness in Sanskrit learning. Well, that's going to take place, uh, indeed, in a dramatic way. Um, and I don't have that image here. But uh, <laughs> when he comes back from that dramatic moment in Gaia, uh, which is in present-day Bihar, have any of you ever visited Gaia? Yes, it's a famous place for worship of one's ancestors and for uh, performing shraddha ceremony. He, uh, Nimai Pandit went there to offer shraddha for his now deceased father. Jagannath Mishra had departed the world. There he meets Ishvara Puri, his, who then becomes his, uh, his guru, his acharya, and he uh, takes shelter of Ishvara Puri, receives mantra from him, and becomes comes back to Navadvip a changed man, <laughs> a young man who eventually meets with Nityananda Prabhu at the house of Nandana Acharya. Um, and that is uh, sort of celebrated in this painting. Most of the paintings of, of our devotees, I don't know the painters, but I do, I do know Pushkar Prabhu, my godbrother, who has painted this. He has a particular style that I always recognize. Uh, sort of very bright, vivid colors and lots of green forestry and flowers. And uh, yeah, in any case, uh, this is now Gorni Thai, but they're standing in this photo uh, in the reverse uh, positions from what we, what we see on the altar. Shishi Gorni Thai, most of you will know, Lord Chaitanya is on the right, Lord Nityananda is on the left, here, there, uh, Lord Chaitanya is on the left, and Nityananda Prabhu is on the right. So Lord Chaitanya comes back to Navadvip and all he wants to do is glorify Krishna. So much so that he can no longer really function properly as a teacher. He had been a teacher uh, of Sanskrit, <laughs> uh, but he was now so overwhelmed in his intense feelings uh, for Krishna that practically any sentence he would start about anything, he would end up just saying Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> and so it, it became sort of a problem. Um, at one point, he, and there's so much more in between all of this, but at one point, uh, <clears throat> Nimai Pandit, who's now perhaps better known as Vishwambar, inspires mm, his, uh, the devotees who are now very happy, very happy that finally he has come around to a uh, devotional, devotional way of being. Um, he inspires them, let's go out on the streets and uh, have Nagar Sankirtan. So what you, some of you do, uh, and many of you do on certain occasions here in Hong Kong, in Shim Shatsui and other parts of Hong Kong, going out and chanting Hare Krishna, it all started in Navadvip. But there, were, there was a problem. Um, as soon as they came out chanting Hare Krishna, uh, the... Uh, the local um, Kazi, who is a kind of judge in the uh, Islamic uh, government of the time, uh, ordered them to be stopped and there was a confrontation and there was a breaking of Madanga drum. So uh, 
Vishwambar decided, okay, now it's getting serious. Now we've got to show uh, that we are serious about chanting Krishna's name. So he, he went out with a large number of uh, followers. And, well, the descriptions are in uh, both Chaitanya Bhagavat and Chaitanya Charitamrita that they were really riled up. Um, it wasn't exactly a peace march. <laughs> Nonetheless, when they came to the house of the Kazi, uh, Krishna Das tells us that Mahaprabhu Vishwambar sits down with the Kazi and they have a conversation. And it's a quite uh, mutually respectful conversation. But the reason perhaps that it's so respectful from the side of the Kazi is that prior to this, the night before, he had had a dream, and in his dream, uh, not Saraswati, but Narasingha, the Lord who is half lion, half man, appeared to him and gave him a very stern warning <laughs> that uh, behave yourself because uh, you don't know who you're dealing with. And he sort of emphasized his warning uh, by putting some scratch marks <laughs> on, on, Kaz, on the Kazi's body. So anyway, he, they have a nice, what we might today call an interfaith conference uh, <laughs> between the two of them. And uh, the Kazi concluded from their conversation Yes, let the Sankirtan proceed. And therefore, uh, Kazi is uh, celebrated by the Vaishnavas to this day. He is honored uh, as a supporter of the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, there's uh, his, his tomb is there in Navadvip in, well, Mayapur, and uh, he's very much honored. Uh, this is a kind of uh, the idea to illustrate what the Vaishnavas came, Vaishnavas came to understand is that, yes, Chaitanya is none other than Krishna, and Chaitanya's associates are none other than Krishna's associates. So the leela, the pastimes, the play of Chaitanya, some 500 and whatever it is, 40 years ago, um, is a reenactment of Krishna's pastimes, as we say, 5,000 years ago. That's the idea being illustrated here. It's said, incidentally, in some texts that uh, the Mridanga Jam is, uh, is a manifestation of Krishna's flute. You may think, wait, the sound of a flute is a lot different from the sound of a Mridanga drum. But nonetheless, that comparison is made, that identification is made. Um, okay, uh, okay, yes, this also happens. <laughs> One of the episodes that devotees celebrate related to the, um, the, the mission of Chaitanya. He had sent, Chaitanya had requested his devotees to go out and to meet people. Uh, Proti gore gore gya koro e bika bolo krishna bajo krishna koro krishna shika. They should go door to door and they should um, request people bolo krishna, please chant krishna's name, bajo krishna, please worship krishna, koro krishna shika, shiksha, please follow the instructions of krishna. So they asked Nityananda Prabhu, 
uh, sorry, Mahaprabhu asked Nityananda Prabhu and uh, Haridas Thakur. Uh, as a team, they went out and they would go door to door. And one day they met these two uh, rather wild characters known as Mad uh, Jagai and Madai, uh, who it said there's no limit to the sinful activities they had been performing and the terror that they had been causing amongst the populace. And when they approached them, Nityananda Prabhu went to them and said, Bala Krishna, Bhadra Krishna, Koro Krishna, Sika. And they kind of looked at him and said, Are you crazy? Do you know who we are? Uh, and uh, the, the tension mounted. Actually, they chased after them, then they came back. And at some point, um, I think it was Madai, took a broken, no, it, 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 he took a clay pot and he threw it at Nityananda and it hit his head, breaking and causing blood to come, at which point Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, Vishwambar, appeared on the scene uh, with the intention to kill Jaga and Madai immediately. With the intention to kill them uh, as Vishnu with his Sudarshan chakra, and that's you see on the top right, uh, top middle of the of the image, he has mm -hmm. his Sudarshan chakra. He's about to slice off their heads, but Nityananda Prabhu says, "Wait! Don't do it. You're forgetting your mission. Your mission is not to kill the demons in this." incarnation. In this avatar, your mission is to uh, kill the demonic mentality and to transform the heart uh, to, uh, to take up the, uh, the glorification of the Lord by chanting His holy name. So when Jaga and Madai uh, see Nityananda saying this to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they have a change of heart. They suddenly understand, oh, what is wrong with us? And at that point, uh, they become uh, transformed, they become, they're celebrated also as great devotees of the Lord. And that's extensively described in Chaitanya Bhagavata. Eventually, Krishna Das Kaviraj, uh, following uh, a prompt from uh, one of Lord Chaitanya's closest devotees named uh, Swarup Damodar, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj identifies these five personalities as, as, um, as the five truths, <laughs> the, tr the five transcendental truths. Pancha tattvatmakam krishnam, bhakta rupa svarupakam, bhakta avataram bhakta akyam, namami bhakta shakti kam. Each of the five, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the middle, Nityananda Prabhu to his right, our left, Further to the left, Advaita Charya, to the right, our right, uh, Gadadhar Pandit, and to the far right, Srivas Thakur, as embodying essential tattvas or principles of bhakti. Pancha tattvatmakam krishnam bhakta rupa. So there's the bhakta rupa, the bhakta svarupa. Uh, the bhakta avatar, uh, the, bak the bhakta and the bhakta sh uh, bhakti, bhakta or bhakti shakti are all represented. All together as a transcendental team, they uh, propagate the Sankirtan movement. Kalim sabajayantyarya gunagya saravagina. Yatra Sankirtanein Aiva Sarvasvarto 
apilabhyate. Uh, the devotees understand what are the incredible opportunities that come with this practice of chanting the holy name. So they are celebrated. We have temples um, where we have deities, uh, most famously perhaps in Mayapur. Uh, you will see if you go how many of you have been to uh, the Mayapur Chandradoy Mandir. And you have seen the very large Panchatattva deities there. Who else would like to go and see? <coughs> Some of you are sort of, yeah, maybe sometime. <laughs> Very soon is going to be the opening of the Grand Temple, the Temple of the uh, Vedic Planetarium. Uh, so maybe you can go for that event. Okay, that was as much as I wanted to uh, tell today about the uh, pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and now for just a few minutes I thought it would be nice to um, appreciate there is a history to the worship of Lord Chaitanya in his deity form uh, and uh, what I have here is just a very small sampling uh, from that history. One of the deities that you can see today in the town of Navadvip is known as Dhameshwar Mahaprabhu. And it is said that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, as before, just before he took sannyas, uh, he, it is said that he personally carved this deity so Lord Chaitanya made a deity of himself uh, and he gave this deity to Vishnupriya, his, his wife, who he was leaving. He was depart. he was giving up family life, uh, taking sannyas. So he would never see uh, his wife again, his young wife. And so as a consolation he gave to her this deity and said, you can feel my presence in this deity. And it's said that she continued to worship this deity, tradition says, for the next 80 years. She must have had a long life, uh, but that's the tradition. In the same temple are the padukas, the uh, shoes, the wooden shoes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whom he left. Uh, they've been uh, covered in silver for protecting them, but you can see them th there in the same Dameshwar temple. One time, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, together with Nityananda Prabhu, visited um, their devotee, Goridas Pandit, in the town of Ambika Kalna, which is in, I guess, great, Greater Nadia district. And uh, Goridas was uh, a grihasta, so he was, uh, he was welcoming them, he was hosting them, and then they said, okay, um, Thank you very much. Uh, now we're going to leave. They were traveling. And Gorida said, No, no, you can't leave. <laughs> I want you to stay here. I want to have you here so I can worship you. And Mahaprabhu said, uh, Well, that's not really possible because, you know, we have a mission, we have to go. Um, but what we can do is we can leave deities of ourselves. So they arranged for these deities to be carved. <clears throat> and then the deities started to leave. <laughs> the deities started to move. They started to leave and 
Goridas Pandit said, wait, 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 no, you, you, you have to stay here. And, and so then they came back and there was this sort of back and forth of the deities becoming Mahaprabhu and Nityananda and Nityananda and Mahaprabhu becoming deities at, to the point where you couldn't tell who is who anymore. At some point, finally, whether it's the deities or... It's understood that the photo we have now here is actually of Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda. <laughs> That's the understanding. And the deities left. <laughs> anyway, um, so these are very early deities of Gornitai. Also in Ambika Kalna are uh, these deities of Suryadas Sarakela. And um, who is Suryadas Sarakela? He was the father of uh, Janava Devi and um, his, her, her sister, what was her name? Her sister, both Janava Devi and her sister became the wives of Nityananda Prabhu. So Suryadas Sarakela uh, has also Gornitai. One thing that struck me uh, as I saw these images is uh, we don't see any of them with both hands raised. They're all with their hands down like this or some you'll see it with one hand up. This is a very interesting deity. And this is Shobha Devi. Uh, who is Shobha Devi? Shobha Devi is uh, the maternal grandmother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this deity is said to have been uh, left made, I think, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was 16 years old. And so it said this would be the very first of all Goranga deities. And this deity is present in Silet, or Dakadaki in Silet is in Bangladesh. And this is the area where Jagannath Mishra originally hailed from, where he came from before he migrated uh, to Navadvip. He has these um, large eyes like Jagannath, so there's a kind of echo of the mood of Lord Jagannath uh, with his large eyes. Lord Jagannath is expressing his astonishment uh, at seeing um, or hearing description of the pastimes of the Lord. Uh, another, there's of course so many deities of Lord Chaitanya and his associates all over, especially Bengal, also Odisha. Uh, Mamu Thakur. In this case, not Gaur Nitai, but Gaur Gadadhar. Uh, as we remember from the Panchatattva one of the personages is Gadadhar Pandit, who was a very good friend, a uh, very close friend, we can say closest friend of, uh, of Nimai, Nimai Pandit. And uh, Gadadhar, unlike all the other members of the Panchatattva, remained a brahmachari throughout his life and eventually uh, lived out his life in Puri, where he was the pujari of the deity Totagopinath, and therefore um, these deities are in that same temple, the Totagopinath temple. So here we see <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's, it looks like he's waving, doesn't it? It's like saying, hello. <laughs> Don't forget, <laughs> Jeev Jago, come on. This is Kana Ikuntiya's Shakbuja 
Mahaprabhu, the six armed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu together with Nityananda, and this is also there also in in Odisha uh, at the place of Shakshi Gopal, which is near Puri, in a place called Badamat. Um, I don't remember now. Kanai Kuntia. What? Kanai Kuntia was a priest. He was, I think, head priest in the Puri temple at the time of Mahaprabhu's presence in Puri. So he was also worshipping Mahaprabhu, not with two arms, not with four, but with six arms. What are the six arms? Well, you see, uh, the bottom two are of him as Mahaprabhu, so holding uh, the Kamandalu pot and it, supposed to be holding a danda as the renunciant, uh, and then, of course, holding a flute as Krishna, and it looks like he has an outstretched hand, like he's ready to shoot. So this is, of course, Ramachandra uh, of Ramlila. Uh, but I find it especially striking at just now, just now I realize, it looks like he's ready to shoot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Shat Bhuja Mahaprabhu. So three in one. This is, and there's a, a beautiful verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, which um, uh, describes, it's said to describe simultaneously all three uh, forms of the Lord. Um, and then sort of coming forward in time, we have Narottam Das Thakur, he was, he would have been uh, in the uh, 17th century, and Narottam Das Thakur is famous uh, to us for his poetry, his songs. The song we sing for Guru Puja, Sri Guru Charanapadma Kevala Bhakati Sadma, Bandhamui Savudana Mate. Uh, this is one of the songs of Narottam Das Thakur, who also established a particular style of uh, Vaishnav devotional music. He is famous for that. So this is his deity. I, I, I especially like uh, this deity. He has uh, this blessing hand and uh, he has such big ears and such a sweet smile, isn't it? And then we come to modern times, the late 19th century, our Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, his deities of Gorgadadhar uh, are in Godrumadvip, where he had his home. Godrumadvip is just across uh, the Jalangi River from uh, Mayapur and his deities of Gorgadadhar are there. And then we have Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur's uh, Goranga Mahaprabhu with one arm raised and the other down, uh, together with Shishi Radha Madhava and they're present at uh, Rudra Godiamat in Mayapur. And this is a kind of, uh, with, mm, this is a sort of common configuration, you can say, of, uh, of the temples established by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur to have Radha Krishna with Goranga in order to illustrate that Goranga is the combined form of Radha and Krishna. Uh, he wanted to illustrate uh, in that way. This deity, you may not be aware of, is uh, a special deity of, uh, of our own Srila Prabhupada, established by him sometime in the 1950s in Jansi. As some of you know, Srila Prabhupada started his, his mission 
initially in India in the town of Jansi and it, it was um, it was a, a small attempt which he came to understand was not going to be um, Krishna's desire that he stays there. He had one disciple, Acharya Prabhakar, um, there at Jansi, and I, uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, at Govardhan, I met his grandson. His grandson, um, um, his name is uh, Madhava, Madhava, uh, Madhava Ghosh, I think, is, um, is quite famous in India <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a ritualist who performs yagyas for very famous persons like prime ministers. Anyway, um, this deity is now in the Keshavji Godiyamat in Mathura because Śrīla Prabhupāda gave this deity uh, to, uh, th to this Godiyamat in Mathura. Well, there is one more image which uh, we would be amiss to neglect. Shishigorni Tai Hong Kong Ki Jai. I believe, am I correct, that Tamal Krishna Goswami was here for the installation? Yeah. Which year was that? 1987. 1987, uh -huh. which means, uh, okay, 90, 30, 36 years ago. Yeah. So I, I think it's nice to see that um, Lord Chaitanya, Gornitai, as deities, there's, there's a history <laughs> to their worship. Uh, they are being worshipped in Hong Kong. Um, as a continuation of a tradition which is going on as we speak. Um, I remember, it, you mentioned 1987, it was in 1987 I visited Bangladesh uh, with, uh, with a couple of my devotee friends and we visited Silet and um, we were amazed to see on, on one street in the evening, people were performing arti uh, in their homes. We could hear bells ringing. It was, it was like, this is what we do, you know, this was the culture. And um, it was really heartwarming to see this. And we sort of walked into someone's home when they were doing the worship, because the doors were open, we came in, and when they saw us, they welcomed us like demigods or something. <laughs> they kind of stopped everything. They sent, uh, I think they sent the young son to run out and, you know, purchase some sweets to give us. And uh, But the, the, the mood there was just so, incredible. Uh, and and Silad, this is sort of northeast Bangladesh. This is where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, where his family background, where they came from. Actually Dakadakin, which is um, a smaller place, a little further out. But the point is, there's this, we're part of a tradition. Uh, it goes back to Mahaprabhu himself, in a sense, we can say it goes back earlier uh, immediately to the people chanting Krishna's names as Lord Chaitanya was appearing. But of course, it goes all the way back to Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna appearing uh, for a kind of uh, repeat performance, a kind, not a repeat, uh, like an encore, I like to say. You know the word encore? like an encore performance. It's like when there's a big, uh, some stage performance and everyone is really excited and happy 
but it comes to an end. So everyone is applauding, encore, encore, we want more. Anior, anior, <laughs> bring us more. So the Lord uh, comes again. And how He comes? He comes as Mahaprabhu, specifically to give uh, what is said no other avatar has given, uh, pure love of, of the Lord, Krishna Prema, in such a sublimely simple way. Simply chant the Lord's names, chant and be happy, as Srila Prabhupada said, uh, or, or as one of my god brothers put it once, chant the holy name, you'll never be the same. <laughs> Okay, I should end there. Thank you all for your kind attention. And Hare Krishna. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. Shri Shri Gaur Nitai ki jai. Gaur Brahmanande. His Holiness Krishna. Krishna Maharaj ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So this, this is just the beginning. So we have the God Purnima coming up.